It's self-labeling and it's driven by the participants themselves, so it's genuinely countercultural. Stars are stars and away days, two books which document the roots of what became known as the casual movement. This is in August 76. You have to look at a 14, 15 year old version of me who's obsessed with, with football. That's my big thing, football and music and clothes. And I'm going to Liverpool and I see emerging this little gang that are not your typical boot boys. So at football in those days, most people you know, wore boots and they wore trousers about this wide and they had loads of hair. But at the other end of the ground, the Anfield Road end, which is where the away supporters went, there's this little gang and they're all my sort of age and they look great, they look different. And what distinguishes them, first of all, is that they haven't got all this hair, you know, you can see their ears, they've got side partings, they've got narrow jeans instead of white jeans, and they're wearing suede boots. This is the key thing for me, is the summer of 77. There are already a couple of youth scenes that are going on in the background, you know, punk is by then very well established. And the common denominator for me that links everything is David Bowie. So in 76, the station to station, and he appears dressed with this luscious side part and a duffel coat. And then in February 77, he releases Low, and Bowie looking more androgynous than he's ever looked. Wind on to the start of the football season, we play Manchester United in the Charity Shield, so this is a year later. And those sort of 15, 20 kids who've got the side parts and the straights, there's now hundreds of them, and they've got these, these the same haircut as Bowie, which I didn't know was called a wedge in those days. And they're wearing narrow jeans and they've got red kickers on. And from top to bottom, it's a unique look, you know, it's a, it's a brave look. You're, you're going out to support your team and you're going to get off the train at Derby and you're going to get given loads of abuse for looking like a girl. I think, you know, whoever started this stuff off, they've taken bits and pieces from the Soul Boy scene, they've mm. taken bits and pieces from punk, you know, mohair jumpers were what a huge thing in, you know, that, that kind of winter of 77. Mm. Mohair jumpers with a Fred Perry underneath, a pair of Lois jeans, pair of kickers. That would be pretty much, you know, the uniform. <laughs> Haircuts, quite funny really. One of the places that would do it in Liverpool was called Minsky's. For years and years, Minsky's was just where girls went to get their, their hair done. And suddenly, you know, all these quite hard lads, you know, from the estates and from the match and so on, start queuing up to go and get the hair done in there. But there was equally, you know, there is a, there's a female side to the story. Again, it was very androgynous. They're wearing kilts. They're wearing white knee stockings and kickers, you know. I mean, the kickers were a huge thing for girls. Oddly enough, blue kickers for the girls, red kickers for the blokes. There's a musical kind of scene that's going on that complements it. There opens a club just off of London Road called Cagney's. And there's a DJ there called Steve Proctor, and he's playing this amazing stuff, which is, you know, it, 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 it's craft work, and it's, uh, it's the Human League, and it's Cabaret Voltaire, Ultravox, but it's, it's basically, it's an electronic soundtrack, which seems to lend itself to the kind of minimalism of, 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 of that sort of look. There's no kind of connector, there's no sort of Malcolm McLaren, there's no great marketeer who's guiding this, this scene. But um, what there is, is, you know, there's a group of influential kids who are mainly from the terraces of football who you're looking up to and you're watching to see what they do and what they're wearing and it's much less label and much less marketing driven. For years we would just refer to ourselves as, as scowls or match lads or there was no real generic term for us. 